Well, I'm glad that you guys are doing well in Toronto um, and I'm also doing well in New York. So I'm glad that all of us are doing well. Um, I'm gonna probably, I'm gonna start the workshop now. This is a very beginner, uh, beginner demo on blockchain development. So the agenda for today is really talk about some of the best practices to approach development process. I may take some 10 minutes to help those who are having uh, trouble with downloading some of the prereqs if they are gonna follow the demo. And just talk about how to make a development easier and also demo how to unbox something cool called truffle boxes. Sorry, I, I might've missed the, 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 me the, um, the message before this. Were there, were there prerequisites for us to install? I I believe yes. So uh, I actually think I might have just sent it to the members chat only. I can send it to you now. Or That's to fine. The, I, I, I might have let's, some of them installed. Who knows? But we'll see. Well, Jennifer, would you mind just going over them with us, like for those who yeah. didn't install? Yeah. So just uh, yeah. Yeah. Just to do okay. together. <laughs> do yeah, together. we'll do it all together. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it all together. Okay, I'll bring up the um the document here mm -hmm. and it's really going to be three it's really oh, going to be no js i think i already have no js installed yes you should have command a command line shell so if you're on windows it should just be command prompt and mac would just yeah. be terminal that should be pre-installed yeah i got uh, terminal so awesome um and then no js uh you need to install no jet Node.js, and then download Truffle as well. So just an easy okay. way, maybe, uh, in your terminal. So let me pull are up. You, are you running it on Mac, Windows, or Linux? I'm running it on, on Mac. OK. And I'm running it on Windows. Oh. Oh, yeah. we'll see how that goes. OK. okay I'll, so I'll install it on Mac. I'll make sure I have it. Yeah, I'm going to see if I can stop sharing this and maybe share my terminal instead. All right, so uh, you can see, to see my terminal here. And I think if you, you can check if you have Node.js installed by just typing in Node-P. And if it says like version V, whatever number that you have it already installed. No, nothing. You don't have it installed? No. I didn't know. It was a prerequisite for, but I don't think it is uh, for Python. Okay, so. gotcha. Then you can take, um, you can type in nodejs.org. Yeah, um, that's right right now. I'm just it. downloading it. Yeah, yes. download, download and install the MSI, right? So, or whatever it is yeah. for the Mac. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. MSI or DMG if you're a Mac. And then Truffle, you said too? Yeah, so and Truffle, like you need that. I think you need to install a node before you can go on to Truffle. Oh, okay. Because I'm just opening up all the windows. Yeah. See the end. Because once you install Node, uh, it's going to use Node to install Truffle. So you're going to have to just write this command: npm oh, okay. space install space dash g Truffle, and then it's just going to install like this there we go yeah you're right yes done oh no i'm getting errors you're getting errors maybe warnings yeah a lot of these yeah if some of these um if you already had them installed like you might get some errors uh and there are some warnings as well let me just take a look at some i got errors access permission denied access oh permission denied access yeah, missing right access to user local lib node modules. Oh, you need to run as an administrator your command prompt, so that's why. It's no, I'm in Mac. It should be working. It should be working. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. You know, guys, I, I have a really bad network. I try to install, and I my network just uh, disconnected. Hmm. I don't know what's going on with this. I think everybody using Wi-Fi those days. <laughs> yeah. I got an yeah. error. I can't install it. But I did have no GIC installed yesterday. It ran overnight. But okay, let me see here. If I do truffle, what does it do? 
Because if you were to take the truffle, if you had run like NPM and saw that G uh, truffle, and then if you just type the word truffle, what do you guys get? Command not found. Command not found, okay. Yeah, mine is also not recognized. Okay, then there must be a problem with uh, NP uh, truffle and so. So actually, what I'm going to think I'm going to do is, do you guys? Why do you guys mind sharing your screen? I'm actually using another computer. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, right. Hold on, I'm I, I'm I, I'm I'm troubleshooting it right now. You can put it in front of the camera and then enable your camera. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I could. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm just I'm just gonna run a pseudo command. It's it. Yeah, because normally, yeah. If you, I was thinking because I've I think I might have had this problem before where I just kind of had to overwrite. Oh wait, I'm my, mine is installed now. Installing now. Oh, good. Right. Oh, yeah, crystals coming up from the rear. Yeah, because I have I had a I had a network issue, but now it, it seems like it works. Let me just oh. the main truffle and see if it, it works. All hey right. guys, we have Azra joined us as well. Hi Azra, how are you? Hi. 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 So yeah, we are installing right now the uh, Node.js and Truffle as well. Do you, do you have Mac or you have a PC, Azra? I, I'm calling from my phone, but I have a Mac. From a Mac, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so if you have Mac in front of you, so we have uh, Jennifer is actually okay. showing yeah, everything that needs to be done. Okay, perfect. Yeah, okay. yeah. so but first you need to go to um, notjs.org, right? Mm -hmm. Am I right, Jennifer? Yes, I can send the links in the chat, in chat. as mm -hmm. well. Yes, yeah, so if you're gonna follow along, you can just down. You have to download uh, Node.js.org. Oh, okay. Node.js, and then we have. I have it shown in my terminal right now, but you just have to run this command in your command line. So you see, like I have. Um, I'm still sharing my terminal, I believe. John, how are you doing now? Yeah, I'm still having, after I ran the pseudo command, I'm still having issues with the install. It's what, what is it giving you now? Um, it's saying I'm, I'm getting different permissions denied access now. Permissions. Um, yeah, I feel like I've, I had this issue before on my end and I remember doing a couple of things. I'm going to try running it as root. Yeah, I, I wish I could help, but I'm the only person using PC here. Yeah. Here. Oh, yeah, you did the sudo. Yeah, you did the sudo command, right? Yeah. And you uh, are running as an administrator, is that correct? Yeah, let me just try one more thing. How about, I'm also getting this one to, this ah. one to uh, that work? Almost worked that time. Ah. Oh, I think I got it. Yay. Got it? Yeah. Yeah, running, I had, for some reason, I ran it pseudo before, and then I ran it a second time pseudo, and now it works. All right, awesome. Truffles installed. Yay, Truffles installed. Hey, okay. thank you. All right, so now that I remember that, like, you need to use pseudo in order to, for some people to troubleshoot, great, awesome. Yeah. All right, I'm going to stop sharing my terminal, and now I'm going to go back to sharing the... PowerPoint. Awesome. Everyone's all set? Yeah. Yep. All right. Mine is installed. Great. So really the goals that I have here for today, uh, we're just going to get started with development easy way. I hope to really continue the series either with other people showing their blockchain development projects or me you know, showing different tools and or we can even have 
in the future has have breakout rooms where just people are just coding and going through tutorials and then we just help each other. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be part of a larger series, hopefully, and this is just the start. And so really before uh, we really delve into development, I really recommend people taking understanding the architecture. So architecture really describes how the application is used in business and interacts with the user and also which tools developers could potentially use to build to build like the dap so in this case for example in this case for example um this it seems like they're trying to build a dap and they identify well the user is going to interact with a dap and they're going to build build it using Ethereum. They're going to have like some wallet software like MetaMask, and well, which in terms, which in turn become, which in turn is used by public, um, which in turn uses public nodes, and it's going to be run on node software. Just really understanding mm. how your software works in conjunction with the dap and how your software is being used in the development process is really going to help you uh, understand um, how the ecosystem works so in our case we so in our case we are using command line which is going to help us write um, <coughs> write commands and they're also going to use Node.js, which is like a runtime environment. So what a runtime environment is, it allows your computer to access different software libraries and frameworks. So in this case, like that NPM, we're using Node.js to download Truffle. Um, instead, of, instead of doing a whole bunch of crazy stuff just to download Truffle, we can just write one command in order to download Truffle. So that's really the idea of Node.js, at least in this use case. And we're also going to use Truffle, which is really the number one development environment for blockchain apps and Ethereum. So if you know how these things work, it's just going to make your development process a lot better. And you might be asking, like, well, how did I even try to pick these tools? Really, to pick the tools that you need to develop, you need to be flexible. Don't tie yourself down to a tool just because you heard that it's really cool. Make sure it has widespread use and a lot of developers are using it. And also, you can read documentation on the blockchain that you want to build on. For example, if you're working on Ethereum, like Ethereum actually suggests you use different types of tools. And that would really help you because if Ethereum is suggesting those tools, other like developers in Ethereum are using those tools as well. So really, what I've learned is don't 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 um, don't bog yourself down with a tool because it's cool. Make sure that it does have widespread use. It is flexible to use, and there's also documentation behind it as well. Any questions thus far? Sorry, um, Jennifer, you were saying the truffle. Is that truffle dedicated to Ethereum, or that can be built that that can be used to build in build on any um, the uh, blockchain? I believe it is Ethereum. Only using Ethereum. Let's actually check this real quick. Yeah, it's only used for Ethereum. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Was there another blockchain that you're interested in building your DAP on? Um, well, we're just still debating, um, but there, yeah, there's some, because uh, Ethereum is quite expensive in the, in, in, compared to the rest of the other ones. Uh, there's some like uh, cheaper ones out there, similar to Ethereum, but it's less gas fees. Mm -hmm. So we're thinking about those ones, but um, we haven't decided yet. Or, well, originally we thought we we're going to build an R on the uh, blockchain, which probably not going to make much sense after talking to various people, including, including Elena. So we might switch to um, the open, the, um, the blockchain, the public blockchain, but uh, we still haven't decided which one we're going to build yet. Maybe Ethereum if it's easier, if you know everything, because it seems like there's a lot of tools around it. Um, mm -hmm. It's just the gas fee we're a little bit concerned about because we can't, we're, we're not considering charging the customers at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So, We'll see. Well, I mean, I mean, even the other um, blockchains, it's it's kind of similar to Ethereum. It's just cheaper, smaller, and cheaper. 
Yeah, there's definitely other blockchains that could be cheaper. I would also recommend uh, you to take a look at how you can uh, make your smart contract not use as much gas. There definitely are strategies. Uh, for example, depending on what you need to store on the blockchain, you might be able to only store that uh, on the memory as, a, as opposed to just storing it directly on the blockchain. So it really depends on what you what data you're going to end up by like, putting on the blockchain. Think about that because um, if you're executing like if you're executing a process and every single part of that process you're going to put on the blockchain, yes, that's going to take a lot of gas money because you're pretty much putting all your data on the blockchain. But if there are certain like processes where you don't necessarily have to put on the blockchain, you just need to put that on the end result, that actually might cut down the cost of the uh, gas that you're going to use. So we can talk more yeah. about that um, once yeah. you kind of have an idea on that. Yeah, okay, thanks. Awesome. Yeah, and definitely let me know which uh, which blockchains that you are considering, uh, because like there are definitely like like you said advantages and disadvantages uh, to them. And I'm excited. I'm excited to hear what you end up designing on. Okay, sure. Thanks. I will share with you for sure. Awesome. Great. Okay. Sounds good. So thank you for that. First. Okay, awesome. So first rule, I would say for just to start with really easy development, don't reinvent the wheel. Use boilerplates or templates. Today we're going to talk about uh, using truffle boxes. So truffle boxes are boilerplates slash templates of dApps and tokens that truffle has already created. And then you just add on your specific features onto them. So for example, the, the truffle box that we're working on with today is Pet Shop. It's a, it's a boilerplate to create like a pet shop adoption smart contract. So once you actually start like doing the demo, you'll see that uh, they've already have created the like the folders to create the blockchain and I've already started I also like curated the interface for you so it really would help you it using like a boilerplate or template would really help you just get started a lot faster instead of building everything each step of the way second second um suggestion I have is use libraries there are Similar to boilerplates and templates, there are existing libraries of smart contracts that are open for you to use. For example, Open Zeppelin is a smart con like a library of smart contracts. They've already built out contracts for certain use cases already that you can use um, to add on to your project. For example, they've already built like an ERC-20 smart contract. So you can create your ERC-20 uh, token, ERC-20 token, and then add additional features onto it instead of rewriting all the code to create an ERC-20 ERC token. And also, secondly, what I like to do is also uh, take a look at GitHub. So a lot of people have already built blockchain projects and, and they make it publicly available on GitHub. For example, I know one of the teams is just creating like a charity smart contract. So one thing that I could possibly do is just type in charity smart contract and just take a look at what people have uh, have done in the past. When they make it public like this, you should be able to use their code, but definitely just ask them. But it still gives you ideas on how to approach your development in terms of how to organize your files, what functions you should have, while also understanding what technologies they've used. 
So Crystal, like you've been saying how you're interested in different blockchains. So maybe an idea for you is just taking, just like typing in like one blockchain that you want to build your uh, DAP on and just taking a look at what people have done and what use cases done and how hard it was for them to implement it. So does anyone have any other questions? Does anyone have any questions thus far? No, I'm good. Awesome. Yes, in here. Thanks. All right. Just one, Jennifer. Um, yeah. Did you did you evaluate other uh, blockchains before choosing Ethereum, or be, or did you just decide to start developing on Ethereum um, from the start? I'm just curious. Yeah. So I started learning blockchain through ethereum just because the network was so great and there's just so many okay. tutorials out there yeah but i have looked into hyperledger fabric i also okay. looked a little bit into nem and i just found like ethereum has like the most resources and okay. like there's just more like it's also evolving a lot yeah. faster than the other blockchains but that being said but i'm seeing a lot more resources and mm. documentation being written for other blockchains like Cosmos and like NAM is becoming significant as well. How about yeah. you? Okay. What's that? How about you? I, um, so I, I've just been learning high level about the different blockchains. So um, haven't really gotten into it. What I've been, I, I'm a C++. I learned it years ago. So I'm teaching myself Python right now. So mm -hmm. um, now I wanted to get back into other developments. So now I'm, this is kind of my first intro to actually writing code down on blockchain. Awesome. Like, yeah, that's, that's really awesome. I think that's also a really good point too. Like you just made me, you reminded me of something. Actually yeah. a big reason why I started with Ethereum is because I have a background with JavaScript. Okay. And Solidity, which is the programming language that is used to build on Ethereum, is very similar to JavaScript. So it was okay. really easy for me to pick up on the programming language Solidity. Yeah. And I'm not sure what the other languages. And actually, now that you mentioned Python, there actually are a lot of blockchains now. Like, for example, like Allegrand, where you can build your whole entire app in like Python or C++ Ooh. and just use an API to connect the connector code with the blockchain. Interesting. So I think one of them um, is Algorand. I can send that. I can just type that in to you. I actually went to ETH Boston and they were doing a demo where you just write your code, Python, I think, I don't know if C++ was one of them, but definitely Python was one of them and just okay. take their API connected. So that, that's going to also be, uh, that's a really good point. That can actually be a faster way for development is just finding blockchains that, finding blockchains that allow you to develop yeah. in other languages. Yeah, potentially. But you know what? It's, uh, it's good to know, it's good to learn a little bit about a lot of them and then figure out which one would make sense for me. So I, I'm really appreciative of you taking the time today. Awesome. Yeah, I really enjoy uh, working on the blockchain. So uh, awesome. hopefully this is a start to more workshops in the future. Awesome. Uh, what to say? You're right. And then really before you dive in, <laughs> now that's a really good segue into before you really dive in, um, before you dive into code, understanding what blockchains exist and what tools exist is probably going to be more important. Once you get that figured out, then you can start understanding the code. I really recommend you guys writing like in layman words or what they call a pseudocode, the logic of the smart contract. So you kind of just understand like what would be going on and then write your code. Okay. What I've normally, that what I've used to help me learn the syntax of Solidity was something called like uh, Crypto Zombies. It is a Solidity tutorial that I've heard like a lot of great, I, I found this on my own, but I've also heard a lot of great things about it. For example, I got like a, I got like a 
contract gig with like a blockchain consulting company. And when I applied, they gave me a coding test and the coding test was like, and one of the things I had to do was actually go through crypto zombies. So I think like a couple of companies are just actually using this to train their developers, but also um, it's a resource for, it's a resource for developers um, for their coding tests. So I I definitely recommend it for sure. That's awesome. Definitely gonna check that out. Yeah, so here's like an example. So, it just dives in. Okay, I'm gonna go through. Like so for example, it actually just tells you, talks about like what a contract is, and just goes step by step on how to write your smart contract. And it's like, okay. it's the highly really recommend it. That's awesome. Yes. One other one other resource that a lot of people I know have liked is DAP University. This guy here he does a lot of tutorials on youtube that are pretty are that are pretty good so if you're more of like a visual learner or you like to listen um i really recommend dap university as going through uh those courses as well and they're all free awesome i'm more of a write the code learner (laughs) so yeah maybe yeah maybe crypto crypto zombies yeah crypto zombies would be uh would be your best bet there Awesome. awesome All right, so I'm going to show you guys how to get started with get started um, with a truffle box and just seeing how that structure is like. So what I really like about truffle boxes is, like I said, they're temp- boilerplates and templates mm-hmm. for you to get started on the blockchain. And when you download this, it's gonna actually gonna really make it actually is gonna really make sense. And the fact that it's actually going to create all the folders for you that you should have when you create a blockchain and actually some of the files already. All right, I'm gonna send this link to you guys because I'm actually gonna probably share my I'm gonna share my terminal so you guys can follow some of these commands. Um, some of these I'm, I'm in the development terminal. I'm now for um, PetShop. Your development terminal for Python, you said? No, for PetShop. For PetShop, okay. Yeah, I've gone through and done all that, so. Oh, awesome. You already, all right, awesome. Yeah. Like what was, what was. I was worried, that, you... it would, I, I was worried that there might be some dependencies, which there were, so Mac had to install some stuff. So it was, and I went through and did that. Oh, awesome. And you, you like stuff, went though. through the whole entire tutorial? Before? No, I just went to Truffle Develop. That's it. So okay, awesome. It. All right, so I'm actually just going to show it. Uh, though, have you been have you been able to kind of take a look into the folders that they've created for you? No, I didn't yet. I okay. wanted to wait to get direction from you. <laughs> okay, awesome. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing this and then share my. To commands here, my terminal. All right, awesome. How familiar are you guys? How familiar are you guys with command line? So uh, Jennifer, I'm 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 pretty good with command lines because uh, you know like you know back then when I was at university, what I what we learned is Unix commands, right? So I'm, yeah. I'm pretty familiar with all those uh, command lines. But I'm not too familiar with the blockchain because this is actually my start, first time looking into it. Um, can you give me a little bit like idea? What is this uh, travel suit going to do for us? What is this a pet shop program? What kind of uh, the outcomes I'm expecting? Like, are, if we install this through the travel and um, it's it's going to run like a smart contract for for what purpose? Like, what is the goal of going this uh, going like what is the goal of this program or this this the suit here going to provide can you give a, can you give a little bit like context on that because i'm just a little bit i, I can't I, I mean i can't follow the command lines but i don't know why i'm doing that all right yeah absolutely so truffle is a 
It's a develop environment for smart contracts and they provide you with truffle boxes. Truffle boxes are bore, like our boilerplates or templates uh, for smart contracts and also dApps. So really when we, so what the goal of the pet shop uh, box is, they actually created a smart contract adapt powered by smart contracts for pet adoption i see okay for pet adoption and so when you on when you run these commands you are downloading a boilerplate or template for like adapt for pet like a pet shop like adoption gotcha and like there are other boxes as well for example there are boxes for tokens there are boxes uh, for creating dApps with drizzle on react native and really the goal of going through these boxes is to see how you can get started with blockchain development pretty easily just to start with some of these boxes to understand the structure of blockchain, of blockchain, like of dApps, because uh, when you uh, when you download these boxes, you'll see how they structured the folders and how okay. you should structure your folders when you're creating a blockchain as well. Okay. One also good thing about Truffle is that they will provide you with a uh, 10 a uh, test blockchain addresses so instead with like with tests ether so instead of you you know buying ether to create right. to test a blockchain they'll just give you like test ether so ether like you're not gonna own um and then you can test it on that you can test your blockchain using like ether that isn't technically isn't real money. I would say it's not real money. It's just like it's it's not yours. So that's really the benefit of having also Truffle. It's a development environment. Okay. Um, I heard of I heard of people saying there's a test environment for Ethereum, which is free. I mean, just for testing, right? So this is different. So what you're mentioning is that the Truffle provide a sort of um, um, you know the 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 Ethereum like token, but for testing in the real Ethereum network. Um, so so the, the there's there I don't know I forgot the name, but I the um the testing Ethereum network. Do you know about that? Like or or I just understood that wrong. Maybe that's what they're mentioning. Maybe that yes. is yes. So uh, truffle it uh, like. There, yeah, there def there are different test networks. In there's definitely different test networks. Um, for example, that you can use in order to test um, your Ethereum DAP. And for example, I think you maybe let's see here. I'm just gonna search it. Um, Ethereum test. And if any developers are on the call and just want to chime in, um, let us know. So there are like three uh, Ethereum test networks that you can use to test Ethereum. It's Robson, Covan, okay. and Rinkerby. Let's see here. Um, Let me just, I'm going to actually search this on my end is. So if you go to Etherscan, you can also yeah. see all the networks, right? So if you go to etherscan.io, 
Uh, yes, and the, you find that, uh, in the right top corner the little Ethereum sign. If you uh, mouse over it, so there is all the test nets that are available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can see there is Robston test net, Coven, Rinkeby, Goerly, and then also there is a new one, a Beacon test net that they're developing for the uh, Ethereum 2.0, the one that will be proof of uh, proof of stake. Yeah. Also, I'm just trying to like figure out like what's a good way to just explain what truffle is. So, Elena, do you have like, um, so it gives you gives you the easier way kind of like uh, yeah. to develop an Ethereum. That's that's what it is. It's a tool for you. It's another tool. There are different tools that so you can use Remix, for example, to test your smart contracts. But Truffle actually uh, allow you to connect your front end to back end, right? Because your application that you're writing, the MVP, is going to contain the front end. There's a whole bunch of you know, HTML, CSS, and uh, all this stuff. So Truffle will allow you to connect your front end to the back end. This is okay, a, let's, yeah. Let's run through the demo. Probably will will help. Um, yeah, yeah. I think I think you will can answer your question. This question yourself once you go through the demo. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I would say like Truffle is more so of a tool, um, and like it more of a tool to kind of help you with the test. But there's other test networks that you can get like Ethereum, like test Ethereum with for. But yes. So I'm gonna go back. So thank you. Um, I'm gonna go back uh, and. So everyone has like truffle installed uh, so it looks like everyone is familiar with command line so i'm just gonna and i'm gonna go to my documents folder i'm gonna do cd documents and i'm just gonna make and within my documents folder i'm just gonna make like a folder called pet shop tutorial and how you're going to do that is going to type in mkdir space and whatever folder name you want to call it so i did pet dash shop slash tutorial all right and then that makes a folder but i want to go into the folder because i want to download the truffle box in this folder so i'm just going to go into it i'm going to do cd space the folder name whatever that folder name so i'm just do cd space pet dot shop dash tutorial let me know if you guys are doing well following along awesome okay so i'm gonna then i'm gonna do truffle unbox pet dash shop and it's going to download that uh it's going to download that uh, box in that folder so it's going to take a couple of seconds or so so it looks like yes it looks like it's it's good, maybe. Looks like I have a lot, a couple of, here, so let me just see. All right, there's some ears, but I think, I think it's going to, and, and I'm gonna do, now I'm gonna do truffle develop. So this is going to run the development console. It's going to give me like that, those 10 um, address, like 10 addresses and private keys for like a test blockchain. Okay. Uh, you should, there's, okay, so there is a mnemonic that you should, you should um, write down just so that uh, you can use these keys again, but sometimes I don't because I'm just doing it once. And then when you're in here, type compile, compile. What that really means is it's just gonna take, it's going to take the code and just, and have the machine, like turn into readable code that the machine can understand. And then we're gonna type in migrate. So this is when, this is, it's going to tell you like how much this is, how much like this is going to cost. Looks like 0 0.003 ETH 
one deployment, that's the final cost. And then I'm just going to actually get out of this. Um, wait, hold on. So how do you get out of that truffle de develop is just you control D on your computer. And then now I'm gonna run the Now I'm going to run the development server. And I'm going to show you what, what the box. Um, hold on here. I just had it. Oh, OK. There you go. This is what it like what the box consisted of. So it had a they created a web page of like pets that you can adopt. It's not completely finished yet, but this is like you then then you can go through the rest of the pet trap tutorial and then create your smart contract. Okay. Yes. Also. One thing, if you do, I think, con control C, and if you're still in, if you're still in yeah, your, Jennifer, yeah. Can I just uh, uh, ask a question? So what is the port for the local host? So when, when you say local host, is there any port? Uh, yeah, it's port 3000. 3000. 3,000. Okay, thank you so much. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'll send it. So yeah, you if you go to, yeah, if it doesn't open right up, you can go to look to this. And if you ran it correctly, uh, you should be able to see it. I think uh, just being able to see kind of visual is really important. But one thing that I'd also find that's really important as well as understanding how like the folder structures are like how you should develop your folders um, in the, when you create like a DAP. So if you are still in the pet shop in your pet shop tutorial folder you can do write ls I think that's in Mac um, and then you'll just see the folders that it created. And that's how you should be also structure your development as well. You should have a contracts folder, a migration folder, a test folder, and other JSON, yeah, the other JSON files and JS files um, are preloaded for you because you're using Truffle. But that's and then if you go into one of those folders, for example, I'm gonna go into like the contracts uh, folder and I'm gonna, okay, contracts folder. One other easy thing, I'm just gonna go through my finder actually and open. You'll see that it created um, a like migration smart contract for you. I can share this. If you open up, okay, I'm gonna share this. For example, if you open up your migration SOL, it has already created a smart contract for you uh, for, for migrations. And if you go through the tutorial, it'll also help you like create a contracts. Uh, also will help you create the logic to adopt a pet. We have like 10 minutes left in the workshop. Do you guys have any questions? So uh, Jennifer, how are you integrate this so um so let's say if we have uh like the, we just want to use personal let's say we have our own websites and everything right mm -hmm. how do you integrate this yeah so i think you would have to 
I would say if you already have like the front end, you still need to create the back end. Yeah, yeah I just the back end. Yeah, so, so the back end of it. So first, um, I would say first, um, I would say instead of using a box, you should use like truffle and knit. Um, use truffle and knit. And then create your smart contracts, and you're going to be using something called Web3 to connect your front end with your back end. So I think you still would have to you like still have to create a smart contract. Let's see here if they can, if I actually can find that. Yeah, maybe if you can show us the, like the pieces of code that you replace with your own, like like because right now it's installed on our computers, right? So everything, right. all the code in our computers, right? right. Uh, so for us, it would be great to understand what to change in order to switch it to ours, right? So it's like the pieces of code that are there. Um, will it be useful, Crystal? Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, because I kind of... Uh, I kind of lost like how to integrate this into our own. Yeah, I, mean, I only need the back ends, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you would need the back end. You still need a back end, but let me find the place where you would re like in the you could connect like a, your Web three, like Web three with your. Mm -hmm. with are your you saying that, that if we're it's, it's more likely that we would use a different truffle box? That, uh, find one that's more aligned with what we're doing and then make those changes or yeah I would say so um, as well I think it's uh, you could you you could find like another truffle box that aligns more and then find where the connection was made with the front end and replace it with your front end um, and in this case, it also sounds as if like Crystal is trying to understand how she could connect her front end with, say, like a smart contract. To the back end. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what I think she's asking. Yeah. Okay, let me find that. It's going to, in the meantime, in the meantime, you guys can also actually explore that while I'm showing that. It's called, it would be called... Web3. Web3 JS is going to be what you guys are going to use in order to connect your back end Ethereum with your front end in whatever language that you guys have. Okay. I believe that it should be in the S. It's usually when you're connecting the when you are connecting the uh, the front end with the back end is usually in the SRC folder. So I guess we can try to find that together. So I'm in the SRC folder right now. Um, and then, so it's so it's in the SRC folder within that pet shop tutorial folder. And also, and then within that, there should be a JS folder. So that's yeah. what I'm gonna try to do. Take a look at, all right, I think I got it. Okay, so I'm gonna open this. I'm actually working through this a little bit faster than normal. So bear with me. Okay, it should be, okay. So you instantiate the, I'm reading through the documentation right now, and you instantiate Web3 in the app.js file within JS and within the JS folder, within SRC folder. And yeah, that's what it says replace me under init. Yeah, for the initialization of all here wait uh can you say that again john yeah uh, in in app.js mm -hmm. i see that like there's code that needs to be replaced in order for you to create a, a connection Let's see here. looks like wait where are you seeing that um in in app.js so if you scroll down a little bit there'll be init web3 async function mm -hmm. It says, and, and under that, it just says replace me. So I'm guessing that's where you would replace your connectors. Or am I wrong? I could be wrong. Yeah, so I, I have to take a look at probably more, but I know that you, um, I remember that you do have to, um, like, update 
something in the app.js with your HTML, I believe. Yeah, so why don't we take it uh, off as a like homework uh, and then come back and then, uh, yeah, continue doing this because it would be really great workshop to see how, so this is, this is somebody's, let's say MVP, right? So right. Mm -hmm. the page and everything. So how would I do it? How would I customize it so I can replace it with everything with my smart contracts and maybe with my front end? This mm -hmm. would be kind of like a great tutorial for us to also listen to. Yeah, what do you think, Crystal? What do you think, John? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because I think we have our, uh, for us, we, we are start, we started coding, right? We have our front end um, mm -hmm. design already. And that was customized for our platform. And we also have our backend databases. The only thing we need is to generate, uh, you know, some proofs in the, in the back of the blockchain, right? And then insert that, uh, you know, key into our backend database, something like that, right? So the, the integration will be really important um, mm -hmm. for our MVP. Yeah, so, um, the, the, the integration, yeah, that, that would be great. Uh, but it's also, to, uh, Crystal, it also depends which technology you use to develop your initial, um, yeah, if it's all, you know, uh, JavaScript and HTML, it's it's great, right? So, it's yeah, we, we, we're, not, we're actually using Python. Python? Yeah. Okay, this, this I cannot comment, I don't know Python. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think I think what what we were talking about earlier, Crystal, was that uh, we, it might be if you're using Python, it might be beneficial to find a blockchain that uh, that's more compatible with Python as opposed to use like this one that uses JS or or HTML. Yeah, but it, I, I actually looked at the Ethereum. Ethereum, like, I don't think Python is very very uh, integratable with Ethereum. Is that so true? Like, I, I think I looked a little bit around. Um, I don't know. I, d I don't think it is, but I'm not the expert. <laughs> yeah, I haven't, I haven't uh, seen any like Python, like anything like built, written on the back end with Python for Ethereum. So you were saying um, JavaScript and, and then what's other popular tools for popular, a popular language for Ethereum? So Ethereum Solidity, Solidity, oh, is, Solidity yeah. is what going to be on the back end, um, the main, on the, on the back end for the blockchain. And then you can, you can, with the front end, you can use, you can use whatever you want on the front end. It doesn't matter what you use on the front end. Yeah. Uh, you can use uh, whatever same website that you can. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, Maybe we have to somehow integrate those. I just things. found uh, a, a very easily uh, website that says Ethereum for Python developers. Mm -hmm. There you go. Get, get in started with smart contracts and solidity for the Python. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's got basic, uh, beginner, intermediate, and advanced uses. And there's different projects and stuff and community contributors as well. Probably not as much as Truffle, but might still be helpful for you, Crystal. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thanks, um, thanks, uh, John. I'm going to definitely take a look on that. Don't worry. Python, okay, maybe, maybe we can just use like Python for the front end and solid it on the back end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How would you use Python on the front end? I mean, like just for the functionality on the front end, you're meaning? I, I, to, to be honest, I'm not the one developing. There's another another partner of mine who's doing the coding. All those. Um, I I think I forgot to forward this one to him. I can't I can't remember if I forwarded to him or not. But I think this is recorded. Recorded, right? Yeah. I'll send, I'll send yeah, this it's to recorded. Him. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll send this to him. And uh, we we are having a meeting on Tuesday to look into the Python and have a dive like a mm -hmm. deep dive in there and see if we wanted to choose it. We just started coding on our MVP, uh, just like a couple of pages right now. I don't know. I know he's using Python for um, for, for, for it. I don't know if he has other languages or if he's just using Python for, for some of the functionalities. Um, yeah. Also, Crystal, I would actually love, because uh, we haven't really, I mean, we haven't started doing our MVP as much. Like I would also, it'd be really cool if you, if your developer can take over like a workshop session and just, uh, show what you guys are working on or what 
resources he would recommend or what resource he would recommend or he found for Ethereum for Python. That could also be another like technical workshop as well. Yeah, we, we haven't put on we haven't put up anything to the blockchain yet, right? That's why or I'm saying this is our first time looking into it. We haven't not we have not put anything on, on any blockchain. We're just doing uh, we're just doing the front end design and the functionality design and we're doing interviews with the customers. Um, we, we kind of move this well John knows very well we, we used to meet John every every week every Tuesday mm -hmm. um, so we, we, we kind of pulled the development to this to this time frame because we can't do any interview with our you know like uh, potential customers which is researchers health researchers they're all busy they don't have time to deal with us right now so we mm -hmm. kind of say okay we're going to put aside our interview process we're just going to go look into you know how to develop how to find the stack and how to develop our MVP into real coding so that's why we started uh, we, yeah once we figured out a little bit more if uh, i'll ask him if he uh, if jay is the guy that uh, my, my partner was doing development i'll mm -hmm. ask jay and he is not a developer developer himself right we're all like just learning he is, he's computer science like me, but you know we both are like we, we, we haven't done any coding for a long time. So. Mm. And just to answer your question, Jennifer, like you can develop front end with Python. You just need to use like parsers, compilers, and transpilers. But um, it, it can it's actually pretty easy to develop front end with Python. Oh, awesome! That's good yeah. to know. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah, Python that's, is so flexible. It's like you can yeah. develop anything. Yeah, that's kind of why I, I started because I first started to learn it for network penetration testing as a script kitty and just you know that kind of stuff. But now I'm getting into it for machine learning and different things like that. So, ooh, that's actually a really good topic as well. Do you use Data Camp? No, I just I, to be honest, I just started last week getting into the machine learning side of things. So, okay, awesome. I can send you some resources um, on that end as well because I do like. Python for, like, for data analysis. Yeah. Uh, so I can send you over. I think I have your email, but if you can send me your email, uh, yeah. I have some. I it in here. Yeah. I want a personal email because it's more personal that um, I'm doing this. So. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. Yeah. The, the machine learning, I did a course with the Stanford. I think they're using MATLAB. It's better from, uh, yeah. it's better from the mathematic perspective. Oh, is it? Python? Yeah, because you do a lot of uh, algorithm, right? You need something yeah. really easy to do the math, math the calculations. Okay. And, um, yeah, that's MATLAB is actually really easy. There's a there's a free version of that. It's 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 um, what, what's that called? I can't remember. Um, and I haven't yeah, used they, MATLAB in years. Yeah, just 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 search free free version of, of MATLAB and you will find it. Okay, okay thank you. You stay okay. awesome. Like, I, I didn't even know like MATLAB had like a free version. I always thought it was like expensive. That's what I thought, yeah. No, there, there's a free version. Oh, uh, I wish I remember what's the, hold on, you know, what? give me a second, I'll find out in a, in a second. Okay, cool. I mean, yeah. I actually use, I use Jupyter Notebooks, which is pretty much a ID, like an online ID for Python that you oh, can okay. write like markup. Um, so. So it's called a uh, Octa or OCT. I'll, I'll text you guys. Okay. So this is, is this is the same version? Is it really the same as MATLAB? Oh, new. New.org. Yeah. Octa. I think it's yeah, Octa. I think yeah. It is. New, new Octa. Yeah. Yeah, Octa. It's really good. It's it's really good for machine learning. Hmm. I'll have to look at it. Runs on Mac, so I don't have to. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm probably going to buy a Mac because it's much easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it. it's really good uh, tool if you're doing machine learning. I think this is easier for uh, Octave. It's a little bit easier than um, than Python. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. All right. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for all this and, and John for, oh, for the information. You. I'll talk to uh, my partner on Tuesday and figure out what uh, he actually is doing. He only showed me the results, right? I didn't really bother to go in what kind of tools he's using. He's just asking me, you know, if I know anybody knows Python well, uh, he yeah. can help to like to answer some one-off questions he has. 
I don't um, I definitely cannot. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a try, John. You never know. Yeah, yeah exactly, because, John. Yes. <laughs> for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get there, though, slowly. Yeah. All right, cool. Thank you so much for this. Thank you. So much. Thank, you. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Awesome. Have a great rest of the weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.